This video demonstrates how to carry out the loop-mediated isothermal amplification assay to detect grapevine red blotch viral DNA. See the link in the video description for additional written instructions. LAMP is a relatively quick assay that can be used to detect red blotch DNA in grapevine sap or tissue. This assay does not require a laboratory, highly trained personnel, or expensive lab equipment. The assay can be completed from sampling to readout in one to several hours. The methods for the LAMP assay were first published in the Archives of Virology in March of 2019. For a copy of this publication, please contact Dr. Keith Perry. Tissue samples are taken from leaf petioles using a pipette tip. Then, the samples are combined with reagents and heated. Color changes indicate presence of virus. For collecting the field samples, you will need plastic bags and marker to label bags, cooler to store samples, and disposable gloves. Select vines suspected of being infected with red blotch. Collect six basil leaves with intact petioles from six different canes. Select leaves that are directly growing from the cane. Do not sample lateral branches. Basal leaves or leaves lower in the canopy should be selected for the assay as the red blotch virus will be more difficult to detect in the upper canopy. Keep in mind that red blotch is distributed unevenly throughout the vine, so sample canes that are in different sections along the cordon. Remove petiole where it connects to the cane and avoid touching the wet end of the petiole to prevent cross-contamination. Seal sample in a labeled plastic bag and transport in cooler. As soon as possible, place the samples in the refrigerator. It is useful to flag the vine that you sampled from in case resampling is required. You will need the following equipment. An incubator or water bath for 65 degrees Celsius or 149 degrees Fahrenheit incubation temperature. The P20 pipe header with the capacity to transfer 0.5 to 20 microliter volumes and an accompanying small pipette tip for the same volumes. You will also need a second P200 pipe header and the associated tips for 20 to 200 microliter volumes. You will also need 1.5 mil capped centrifuge tubes, 5 mil capped centrifuge tubes, and 200 microliter capped microfuge PCR tubes in strips of eight. You will need disposable gloves to prevent contamination. Razors and paper towels or butcher paper is also useful. The following two reagents plus distilled water should be stored in a freezer until needed. The reagents are the DNA oligonucleotide primer set and the warm start colorimetric LAMP 2X master mix. Each assay consists of eight PCR tubes that you need to prepare. All PCR tubes will have the reagent mix. In the first four tubes, you will prepare samples from individual vines. In the next four tubes, you will prepare a positive control in number five, a negative control in tube number six, and in seven and eight, two additional negative controls. The positive and negative control tubes are essential. You will need to source tissue from plants 
that you know are red blotch infected and uninfected for samples number five, the positive control, and number six, the negative control. These sample tissues can come from previously tested plants or you can request viral DNA controls from cooperating laboratories. Retrieve petioles from the refrigerator and distilled water from the freezer. Set up the materials in a clean workspace with good lighting. Have extra paper and gloves available to change in between samples. Preheat the incubator to 65 degrees Celsius. And number six five mil tubes for each plant sample and eight 200 microliter PCR tubes to include samples seven and eight. Next, prepare plant sample solutions. Thaw a 1.5 mil tube of distilled water. Set the P20 pipetter for 10 microliters and transfer 10 microliters of distilled water to each of the six 5 mil tubes. The next step is to sample three of the petioles from the same vine. Lay a small pipette tip on the paper and retrieve petiole samples from the bags. The pipette tip will be inserted into the end of the petiole. It is easier to puncture soft, spongy tissue. However, if the end of the petiole is hard and woody, cut off five millimeters with a razor. Insert the pointed end of a small pipette tip into the end of the petiole. Insert for three successive punctures and use this technique to sample all three petioles. A minuscule amount of tissue will transfer into the tip. Important. Do not sample too much tissue. Too much will adversely affect the assay. There should be about one millimeter of tissue and no obvious pieces of tissue on the outside of the tip. If the tip bends at any point, start again with a new pipette tip. Please note that tissue samples can also be collected via cane scraping. Use a razor to scrape away the surface bark and expose the tissue underneath. Use the pipette tip, as with the petiole, to slightly scrape and collect underlying tissue. Place the tip into the 10 microliter droplet of water in the 5 mil tube and close the cap. Flick the tube with your fingers and shake the tube to bring down any droplets on the side. Clean up all of the plant material and change the paper and gloves to avoid cross-contamination. Wipe down the table surface if tissue has contaminated the surface. Repeat this process with plant samples two, three, and four. If not sourced from a lab, you will also have to do this for your positive and negative plant controls. Sample number seven will contain no plant material, only the lamp reaction mix and distilled water. Sample number eight will only contain the lamp reaction mix. The final step before conducting the assay is to combine the reagents to create the lamp reaction mix. Retrieve the reagents from the freezer. Thaw the 1.5 mil tubes with distilled water, the DNA oligonucleotide primer set, and the warm start color metric lamp 2X master mix. Thaw the red blotch primer and the lamp 2X master mix. Flick the tube to mix and shake down to ensure that all liquid is at the bottom. Using the P20 pipette, transfer 12.5 microliters of the clear primer mix to the 1.5 mil tube containing 
the lamp 2x master mix, which is red. Gently pipette up and down to rinse the pipette tip. Next, using the P200 pipetter with the 200 microliter tip, add the 45 microliters of distilled water to the same tube containing the primer in the lamp 2x master mix. Again, pipette up and down to rinse the tip. You will now have made the lamp reaction mix. Flick the tube to mix and shake down to ensure liquid is all at the bottom. Shake the tube downward to bring down any droplets on the side of the tube. Using the P20 pipetter with the 20 microliter tip, transfer 12 microliters of the lamp reaction mix into each of the eight 200 microliter PCR tubes. Loosely cap tubes number one through seven and tightly close tube number eight. This is the negative control with only the lamp reaction mix. Change to fresh gloves again or wash your hands. Pick up plant sample solution number one that was prepared in the five milliliter tube. Flick and shake down tube, then inspect to ensure the water droplet is at the bottom. The pipette tip that you sampled with will still be in the tube. Carefully open the tube and avoid your finger touching the rim, which can cross contaminate the sample. If you do touch the rim, change gloves or wash your hands before proceeding with the next sample. Using the P20 pipetter with the small pipette tip, draw 0.5 microliters of solution. This is a tiny amount, so you may want to hold up to the light and confirm that there is in fact a small volume in the pipette tip. Open the 200 microliter tube labeled number one containing the 12 microliters of lamp reaction mix. Transfer the 0.5 microliter plant sample solution into the lamp reaction mix. Pipette up and down and close the cap tightly. Repeat this process for samples number two through number seven. Every time you do an addition, it is recommended that you hold the tubes up to the light and confirm the transfer of volumes. Once all of the eight PCR tubes are filled, holding one end of the strip, flick the tubes a few times. Then flip so you are holding the other end of the strip and flick the tubes again. Shake the strip of tubes downwards and take note of the red pink color of the reagent in each tube. If any of the reagents look orange at this phase, this indicates a problem as it potentially suggests that the pH has been changed simply by adding plant material. Check that the temperature of the incubator is 65 degrees Celsius and transfer the strip of eight tubes to the incubator and set the timer for 35 minutes. After 35 minutes, remove eight tubes from the incubator and examine the color of the reagents. Samples number six, seven, and eight are the negative controls and should have retained the red-pink color. Sample number five is the positive control and should have turned yellow indicating the presence of red blotch virus DNA and that the reagents are working and that the assay was performed properly. Thus, samples number one through four show as either negative, a red-pink color, or positive, indicating the presence of red blotch DNA. Here, the first four samples turned yellow, indicating the presence of red blotch DNA. If orange colors are present, the results are ambiguous and the assay may not have been performed correctly. Please note, although a red-pink color indicates 
that red blotch DNA has not been detected, it does not necessarily mean that the vine is not infected. A plant might test negative because the virus may not be equally distributed throughout the plant. And a plant might test negative because the virus may not be equally distributed in the plant and not have been present in the selected petioles or cane tissue. Please remember, written instructions with additional details accompany this video. For further questions, please contact Jennifer Roars, R-O-H-R-S dot Jennifer at gmail.com.